<laughs> look at that brand new opening intro video from the great brian ward to bring us into this brand new episode of the jedi way and as you can see around us great new graphics thanks so much, so much to brian ward who's very kind to help out you guys have been asking when is kevin going to be added to the video kevin smets is officially added to the video and we got these awesome new graphics to accompany it as well I am the outlaw, John Roca, joined as always by these two wonderful people, uh, Laura Kelly. So great to see you. It's been a bit. How are you feeling? How are you doing? I'm doing amazing, John. I'm probably doing a lot better than you guys dealing with the sort of gloomy oh, weather out there in San Diego. Sure. <laughs> like, welcome to my world, you guys. Like, it must be, it must be nice to always have sunshine, but go what? <laughs> Is it two weeks that you don't get it? I'm so sorry. I'm so <laughs> it's, sorry. It's been a thing. It's been a thing. Uh, Kevin, you're up in LA. How? Are, oh, no, you're down here with me. That's right. But yeah. you're closer to the beaches. So... How are you doing, Kevin Smith? Smets, and how has the rain affected you over the last few days? We are going to make it through together. That's what we're going to do. We will rebuild. I, yes. I, I'm the opposite of you, Laura. I think it's because you grew up over there, but I wish I had seasons. I loved the rain as a kid, so I love it here. I always look, and I get so sad at the end of a rainstorm when like, uh, it just shows, like, oh, we got sun for the next eight days or 10-day forecast. I'm like... <laughs> No, I miss the rain. So you yeah. put the rain when you have the rain, you can play the Jurassic Park score while you're driving, and it's freaking oh, yeah. great. So it's bring on mindset. the rain, dude. Mindset and vibes. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you guys. I feel really professional now. I got, I got like a mic thing. Is this how it's supposed to go? Like this to cover my face? Or yeah, that's it. Now. Nailed it. I feel like Howard Stern, dude. I'm a rock. I'm a jock. <laughs> uh, a shock jock, dude. Jock in the '90s. Feeling man. good. Feeling good to see you guys. Glad to be. I love our new color schemes too. So. I know, right? It's really nice. The way it's all laid out. Big shout out again to Brian Ward for doing that. We hope you guys uh, enjoy that opening intro. That is now our intro going forward. Uh, but we got so much to get into here today. We're going to talk some news on um, on the Mandalorian uh, here and Grogu movie. We got some news on that. We're also definitely going to talk about Carl Weathers and give our tribute to his incredible legacy, not only in Star Wars, but outside of Star Wars as well. We're going to talk about Ewan McGregor trying to get a write-in campaign for a season two of Kenobi. We'll talk about uh, Daisy Ridley and her comments to Josh Horowitz about the upcoming um, uh, Star Wars movie that she's doing with Charmino Bay Chinoy. And we are also going to talk about the Gina Carano suing Disney situation and not get too deep into it, but we're certainly going to talk about it as it is star wars news but uh, i want to lead off today's show with this recent tweet that just popped up over the last couple hours from bob Iger, and get you guys initial thoughts on this one bob Iger has confirmed in this uh conversation that he was having for the investors here for disney and for star uh, for star wars saying he's confirmed that star wars uh that the mandalorian and grogu movie will be the first of the new slate of star wars movies likely to hit in 2026 so Laura, he's given himself some room with the likely to hit stuff, but certainly very clear that this is the first movie coming out. I know we kind of suspected that and had been the reports, but now that it's official from Bob Iger's mouth, what are your thoughts on this as you hear this from him? I think we're definitely building in a little bit of cushion here, which is probably a good way to go. It's probably mm. a good strategy here. It's interesting that this came out, this news came out now, because just recently yeah. there is a there is an issue of production weekly i believe that yes. stated that this movie is going to be going into production in june of this year yeah. um which is now production weekly has been wrong about star wars things before sure. um there have been like leaks that have come out of that that have been woefully incorrect so you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt but i if that is the case and they are going to start filming this summer um, I'm kind of surprised by this 2026 date that's a hmm. lot of cushion to build in for a film that I wouldn't think would need quite that much time, but yeah. I would, I would have guessed maybe late 2025, early 2026 at the latest. But if they're saying 2026, the sort of pattern with star Wars is that it's usually later yeah. in the year. We generally are looking around holidays um, to be releasing star Wars films, although not always solo, obviously being uh, was a sort of different vibe, but yeah, well, exactly. it should have been a different vibe. It should have been a Christmas release. That was horrible, yep. but I'll get into that another time. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you. Um, but yeah, that's, this was kind of surprising to me, but I think it's probably, like I said, a good move. Yeah. I mean, we're in January of 2024 or actually we're about February, 2024. As you said, Laura, the, the, uh, the publication came out saying that it was going to start in June. So you look at June to what from 2024 June to all the way to maybe December of 2026. Would it be May of 2026? Would they take advantage of the May 
calendar. It's a May month. It's an interesting uh, situation from that angle. Kevin, do you think that's enough time? I mean, do you think that's too much time? What, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that it'll go farther than 2026? Uh, and do you like that Iger has officially said that this is the one, the Mando and Grogu movie that would be the first one? Yeah, I think it's because they're doing the Ryan Johnson trilogy first. So oh, <laughs> all right. It's, it's all about Broom Kid. We're going to find out what he, what he's up to. Uh, Not time. No, I mean, look, take their time, man. I think yeah. that they're also going to very much take their time and make sure that they get it right this time. You know, you don't want to blow too many chances, right? Uh, That's true. You, you got to keep going until the chances are spent, as Jen Urso would say. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I would say that that doesn't bother me, but just, I, I don't care if, if, if they're wrapped in February, hold that puppy until December, mm. you guys, it, it like, it made no sense. They dominated December. It was so perfect. Yeah. And then for solo, they're like, let's throw it out there a month before the new Avengers movie. Stupid, right. stupid, stupid. As Randy Orton once said to uh, someone, I forget who roca you probably remember but anyways uh yeah i i absolutely 100 percent am excited about it but uh, it is almost comical whenever i see new announcements like oh mm. they announced this new slate of star wars movies like i'll see it when i'm in the this theater when i'm in the theater sitting down watching mandalorian and grogu is when i'll believe that finally get these movies in the theater yeah, one of the first comments underneath that post was, I'm old enough to remember when Bob, Bob Iger told investors in 2019 <laughs> that the next Star Wars movie would be the first Benioff and Weiss film in 2022. So oh, wow. that's for sure. But I mean, Iger seems to have come back and made it very clear that he wants to focus, especially today, what he said in the comments, the bigger franchise stuff is what he's focusing on. And he wants to take time in between these uh, in between these uh, uh, installments in each of the franchises. So yeah, I think the 2026 gives them wiggle room, gives them time. You know, we've heard a lot of rumors of the last few weeks. Will Charmin Obey Chinoy's film be the Ray film, or will it be Sean Levy who takes over? Will they mix them both up? What are they doing with this? And we'll get to Daisy Ridley in a, in a little bit, but she, even she was asked about uh, the older Ray movie, and she claimed that she'd heard nothing about it, that Helen Mirren was possibly consider considered for the role of an older Ray or what have you. And so there's been a lot of stories been spinning around about the Ray movie. So the Grogu thing being settled as 2026, I think, gives us a little bit of a roadmap towards that movie, towards the Ray movie. Where are we going with that when that might be uh, dropped? And are they going to just drop one, two, three, like right at 2026, 2027, 2028, then 2029? Are we doing that? Or are we dropping two in 2026, maybe one in 2027, one in 2028? Uh, it's a lot of questions right now when I look at it. But at least the Mando and Grogu movie seems to be in motion. So uh, we will find out uh, when that one actually month-wise drops in 2026 if it actually drops so um, i have a question yeah. for you guys yeah, do please. we think that that means the next season of the mandalorian is 2027 it's tw mm. it was 2023 that we got season tw season three of the mandalorian right. is season four after this movie i mean good that's good god yeah. that's a long time to wait for the next installment of a mandoverse show yeah, although i guess will be in college college college. Jeez, that's insane. I mean, well, Skeleton Crew is supposed to come out, and I guess that's part of the Mandover, yeah. so that's supposed yeah. to come out sometime next year. But still, when it comes to, like, Mandalorian and Grogu, yeah. I mean, are we waiting till like, 2027 for season four of Mandalorian? Good Lord. Yeah, and are they shooting them at the same time, right? Are they shooting the movie and then shooting uh, scenes for the series that are going to be connected or, or con yeah, in some way connected to the movie itself in for release later on? Yeah, that's a great point, Laura. It'll be four five years or four or five years before we see another season of the of the mandalorian if that's the route they're going here which i mean Iger did say kevin that he wanted to come back and take his time in between this stuff so is this a, a little bit too much time what are your thoughts on that uh i don't know i i just I, i'm kind of along for the ride I, i'm so confused on the release dates now like I thought Skeleton Crew was this year, but now it's Acolyte this year. Is it, what are we getting this year? Anything? No, it's Skeleton Crew this year. It's supposed no. to be like okay. hall, like late this year, as yeah. I understand it. Um, gotcha. But so we'll get Bad Batch before and, that. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we, got bad, we have Bad yeah. Batch. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Yeah. Skeleton Crew and then Acolyte coming up as well. And don't forget Ahsoka Season 2. And then uh, even today or over the weekend, uh, Stellan Skarsgård saying that uh, Andor Season 2, he's really happy with how it ended. So they've clearly finished shooting it, it seems like. You mean he liked the opening of Rogue One? That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and they say the last scene's the first scene, basically. About time he saw it. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this on a side note. Watching yeah. Rogue One recently, uh, I had no idea the 
the amount of time you invest in Andor, mm. and then you see that final scene, which from the soundtrack, it's called Your Father Would Be Proud. Great yeah, score. Right. Uh, I had no idea it would hit me as hard as it did, like watching his last seconds of life after seeing so much more of his life. Uh, and I think oh, it's yeah. only going to be exponential after we see both seasons of Andor. That's a great point. <laughs> uh, it, it, it does change Rogue One uh, for the better in so many ways. As if it could get better, but yeah, in my opinion, but yeah, I hear you. Um, all right, well, let's uh, let's move on to the uncomfortable part of the conversation of our show here. Let's talk about uh, the big news here uh, that happened just yesterday as we're recording this. Uh, Gina Carano has filed a lawsuit with the help of Elon Musk. She is suing Disney for wrongful termination and discrimination. Uh, she is seeking a whopping $75,000, and I mean that sarcastically, in damages. <laughs> She's also asking the court to force Lucasfilm to recast her as Cara Dune. Um, she is 41 years old, former MMA fighter, for those of you who remember that. Uh, she uh, was Cara Dune for two seasons of The Mandalorian, and uh, she was fired because she posted a number of quote-unquote right-wing posts. Uh, one of them in February of 2021 equated the persecution of Jews by the Nazis to the political climate Republicans are facing today. Uh, she said, because history is edited, most people today don't realize that to get to the point where Nazi soldiers could easily round up thousands of Jews, the government first made their own neighbors hate them simply for being Jewish. How is that any different from hating someone for their political views? That was the straw that broke the camel's back after she had already posted about election fraud and had issues with the trans rights uh, or, uh, people because of her posting her pronouns as beep, bop, boop. Uh, but um, after that post, uh, the, she was dropped by Lucasfilm uh, and UTA dropped her uh, as well. So at the time, Disney said her social media posts denigrating people based on their cultural and religious identities are abhorrent and unacceptable. The civil suit is 59 pages long. Oh, wait, we lost Kevin. All right. Um, <laughs> and the opening of it. And this is where you want to understand, like, what's the serious nature of this lawsuit? Because the opening of the lawsuit literally reads, a short time ago in a galaxy not so far away, defendants made it clear that only one orthodoxy in thought, speech, or action was acceptable in their empire, and that those who dared to question or fail to fully comply would not be tolerated. Another, uh, the paragraph goes, another paragraph goes on to mention um, the planet of Alderaan being destroyed by the Death Star, uh, and that she is someone who dared to voice her opinions and that even though the force is female, the defendants, Disney uh, and whoever else is named in this and Lucasfilm chose to target a woman while looking the other way. So she's she's claiming discrimination. She's claiming uh, uh, harassment here uh, and she's claiming that she was uh, they were trying to silence her. Um, but I, I'm going to go back to Laura again on this. Well, Laura, seventy five thousand dollars in forcing them to recast her back as Cara Dune. I mean. How serious should we take this lawsuit? Is this just performative anger in a legal way? What are your thoughts on this? Oh, it's 100% a performance. She is putting on a show for sure. I'm, I'm guessing that that movie that she made with Ben Shapiro probably oh. didn't break yeah, any box office records. <laughs> yeah, I'm just guessing. So, yeah. you know, she's out of the public spotlight and maybe she needs some attention. So yeah. she's going to put on a show. And if her intention was to make them laugh, mission accomplished because this is absolutely ridiculous the intro of this lawsuit is so funny <laughs> and so entertaining like actually i read quite a bit of it i actually oh, want to go did. through and read the entirety of it right um but yeah this is it's interesting i i work in hr so i i feel like mm. some of these things are really interesting to read like you can't bring a discrimination suit unless you're alleging discrimination based on your race yeah based on uh age at the time she was not over 40 when she when this was all going down right. so that doesn't work um or gender so that's the route that she's taking here yeah. in theory she would have a case in practice not so sure what are, what are your thoughts uh kevin anything yeah. jump off jump out at you right off the bat oh you're muted can't hear you oh yep yeah. It's like my first time ever. I thought you were joking about this. Sorry, by the way, I thought I would get away. You were on the the screen for so long. The second I get up to move my Star Wars things up, 
you, Sorry, you go right out of the... I didn't see that you weren't on there. Sorry. No, no, I, I, I was going to plan on it in one of our breaks, but then I, I was like, oh, I, I see Gina, Gina Carano on my screen. I'm going to try to do it. Anyways, I thought you were joking about this opening, and then oh, no. I clicked that Twitter link. <laughs> it's real. Someone needs to animate this with the crawl, dude, because it, oh. <laughs> it's just How so has that not happened? Oh, my God. <laughs> it's got to have happened. Someone, one of the fans, point us out in the comments or something. That is hilarious. Yep. I mean, it, that, it, uh, for, I mean, my only comment on this is like yeah. the, the whole uh, asking for the job back. Like, yeah. you know, unless, unless everybody on set was like telling her, hey, man, it's a bummer. What happened to you? We miss you. She might be a really nice person in real life. We don't know, like as far as right. interpersonal, as far as working as an actress or whatever. And maybe they're all telling her to come back. But if not, like, why would you want to come back to some place that you're not wanted? Like, and right. I don't mean that you should never just roll over if someone, if you're, if, if something is a great injustice done to you, obviously stand and fight for it. But like in yeah. this one, it's like, she, she, she's got to know like what she did and how that, that kind of could be seen as really negative and why Lucasfilm would do it. It's kind of one of those things like, ah, God, yeah, I understand. But wanting the money and then th that surprised me too, that she wants her job back. Yeah. Someone did do it. Oh, yes, there God. Is. Kyle right. Katarn did it right here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's so embarrassing. Well, my note is it shouldn't be all caps, but that's fine. It, it, you know, <laughs> I have a note for you, Kyle. That's There's great. no chapter. What chapter is this one? Is this <laughs> it's like a one? 1977 release. <laughs> There's nothing on top. It looks so weird. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, I mean, that's, that's that. Comical. That's I'm it. So I, look, I never wanted to put take food off someone's plate but i think course, someone right. sometimes you need to uh uh have responsibility uh and ownership over things yeah and it, it kind of seems a little tone deaf especially when you start it just makes it almost like a joke uh with, with this I, again i thought you guys were jo joking <laughs> with that so yikes yeah but also california is an at-will state so like yep. she cannot do it like there's no legal basis for her to stand on this is all just performative and, and remember a few weeks ago at that conference, I can't remember what conference it was from, Elon Musk was asked about, uh, you know, Bob Iger and Disney removing um, ads from Twitter slash X because of some of the controversial posts from Elon Musk. And uh, he told Bob Iger, of all people, that if he was in the audience to F off, I mean, to F you. And like, this is where what you're dealing with. And so you're this combative, unnecessary poking here. And for her, who was given so many opportunities, I saw people who defend uh, Gina Carano just saying like, oh, it was unfair, it was unfair. Disney gave her so many opportunities to take stuff back, to make the changes, to do whatever. And I get the comparison to Pedro Pascal, which I think is somewhat fair. But what Pedro was saying is, he's Hitler, these are the Nazis, right? You say that, you're angry, you do that in arguments. Oh, what are you, a Nazi? Like, you do that in arguments, right? Right. But posting the images, and here's the Im posting these kinds of images uh, when you're re reflecting a Disney brand that is a family brand is inflammatory, is just horrific to put on there. There's a different approach to it, you know. And I get the cages comment that some people are using as well, but Trump was putting immigrants in cages at the border. So these are things that are, you can make legitimate claims to that in connections in modern times. But this idea that a political point of view, and it's not about, there are plenty of conservatives who work in Hollywood. There are probably plenty of conservatives who work in Star Wars in on the yep. production side or on the executive side. So, but it's a different situation when you're dealing with being a representative out front and face. And you can have your opinions, have your points of views, but when you go too far down the wormhole that becomes an issue for a majority of the fandom, then guess what? You don't get to keep your job. That's the game. It's a This is a free enterprise system. It's a capitalist system here in this country, and they have a right to let you go if you're not representing the brand well. You know, if I was working at Collider and I was constantly saying, this place sucks, Screen Rant's the best, like they would let me go, and I wouldn't be like, you know what, unfairly, unfairly terminated. So, but... Laura, I think you're right. It, there's the, just that opening paragraph tells you how, how unserious this actually is. And the paltry sums of $75,000. And Jeff said it best on Hot Mike. He said it, it, the way they could get back at her is give her the job back and then cancel the show. And so like that's <laughs> they could totally do that, right? So, 
Well, and I think even if California wasn't an at will employment state, which it is, they have justification to fire her for any reason, or, you know, they can't, they have the ability to fire her for any reason, whether they have justification, I guess, is her question. But you better believe that Disney's got some of the most thorough and accomplished lawyers writing the contracts for every person on every set of every yeah. project. So there's just no chance. I don't think that this goes here, that, that it goes anywhere legally. Yeah. And yeah. I think, you know, more than likely in her contract, she probably also agreed to a certain code of contact yeah. conduct, which I'm sure she's not following given some of her tweets, despite right. the fact that she did delete them. Not good enough. You found them. They live on the internet forever. They do. And they always will. And the other part of this is today, Bob Iger, as we were mentioning the comment earlier he made about the, the Mandu and Grogu movie, he was asked his thoughts on the situation with Cara Dune. Do you have any thoughts? And he said, uh, Gina Carano's lawsuit. And he said, none. None thoughts. That's <laughs> basically. And that tells me how little they actually care about this lawsuit and how, as you said, Laura, these lawyers are going to get their hands on it and cut it to pieces for sure. Um, so anything more to say on this or uh, can anything more, Kevin, you want to chime in on it? As, uh, I yield more? my time on this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's so laughable. So good luck with that. Yeah, right. exactly. The, all, you know, Kevin and I have worked in California for a long time. This is going to be very tough to prove. Um, all right, let's move yeah. on to a little bit of sad news. And sadly, this person was mentioned in this lawsuit, which is a real shame and um, a pain to see. But uh, the great Carl Weathers, Grief Karga himself from the Mandalorian series, sadly passed away a few days ago at the age of 76. Carl appeared in over 75 films and TV shows during his 50-year career. He was the head of the Bounty Hunters Guild in nine episodes of The Mandalorian over three seasons. But of course, he's best known for playing Apollo Creed in the Rocky series. Um, And he had a memorable turn as Derek Chubbs Peterson in Happy Gilmore. Uh, He also helmed a number of TV shows, including numerous episodes of The Mandalorian, but also Chicago Med, FBI, Law & Order, Hawaii Five-0, 18 Wheels of Justice, Strong Medicine, and a San Diego favorite, Kevin, you might not know this, Pensacola Wings of Gold that was shot here in San Diego. But, of course, Grief Karga is uh, the thing that we are talking about here on the show. It's sad. It's so sad. And then this is second death that comes out of nowhere with Ray Stevenson's death as well. Uh, and the fact that we're not going to get Grief Karga saying Mando one more time in a Mandalorian and Grogu movie or in season four of The Mandalorian. And it's just... Such a sad situation. Died in his sleep, found by his family. Kevin, your thoughts on this? You're a Rocky fan as well. Like, what are your thoughts on Carl Weathers passing away at 76, just as he was experiencing maybe a second renaissance as a creative in our business? Yeah, I, I just, I go back to hearing. Uh, it, it reminds me of the Ray Stevenson passing, and not because mm-hmm. oh, it's another person who died from like a Star Wars Disney Plus show, but. Um, there were, I, f- I forget, I saw it in one of the behind the scenes, the, the ep- oh, I think it was the behind, didn't he, did he direct the episode with, um, um at best? Yes. Yes, he did. he did. Yes, he did. So watching that behind the scenes, I think there's a clip where he's just, he, he looks at the camera and he's smiling and you could just tell he loves being there. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that everybody is there just for a paycheck. Some people are, but some people love it, right? Yeah. Like Ewan McGregor loves it. Ray Stevenson talked about how much he loved it when he was at, uh, Star Wars Celebration. I've talked about that interview many times. Yeah. And I know that Carl Weathers from these behind the scenes glimpses and into interviews absolutely loved it. He loved it probably for the career resurgence, but also he loved being in that world of Star Wars and being able to be a creative force behind just behind the camera as well as in front of it. So it's it's a sad thing to lose a um, to lose someone like that. It's a sad thing to lose anyone who's part of a family, but. Uh, it's just another one that was there, like that was just gung ho, loving Star Wars, and we were all loving him. And yeah, it's like a bummer. Uh, yeah. And I'm curious, uh, not to get not to get town too cruel, but like, what do they do like with it? Will they will they give him a proper send off like what they did with Chadwick Boseman and Black yeah. Panthers? You know, like what will they do as far as that goes? Um, yeah. uh, but I mean, that's not for a conversation for today. Today is just celebrating his life, and yeah, the Apollo Creed like to embody that like Muhammad Ali style profile and like uh, loud mouth. Uh, you know, yeah, uh, be able to do that, and then also do comedy like with the. Um, in yeah, uh, Happy definitely. Gilmore and Arrested Development, and make a good stew. Like <laughs> he, he was fantastic. So, and I know they have in the Happy Gilmore, he's playing the piano from heaven. Uh, you know, right. why do birds suddenly appear? So he's out there. He's up there in a good place. He's one with the Force, and I am thankful that he got to make the contributions he did to Star Wars for sure. 
Yeah. Uh, Laura, what are your thoughts? I know we spoke before we started the show. You're not that steeped in the Carl Weathers filmography necessarily, but certainly a massive part of the Mandalorian and a massive part of Star Wars. He had become that over the last few years. Yeah, I remember when his casting was announced for The Mandalorian when we were talking about it on Force Toast, Alice mm. and I both came at it from a point of view of we we know him as best as Chubbs from Happy Gilmore. <laughs> that was the, the iconic Carl Weathers role for us yeah. growing up um, and still probably is to this day. Um, but, you know, I think the best thing about it, and it is so tragic, but he had a really great ending at the end of season three of The Mandalorian. Mm. He, ha he hands over the keys to Din Djarin for his new home on the outskirts of Navarro. He yeah. wishes him well. And it, it really is kind of the perfect ending, I think for that character. If that's, if that is indeed where it had to end in this very yeah. unplanned way. Um, but he seems so joyous about star Wars and interacting with fans at conventions. So this is really tragic. Um, and I, I do feel really bad, I think for his family, but I think also the fact that he died in his sleep, that's really the way to go. I yeah, mean, yeah. it's really, it was so jarring because I feel like he's so active on social media yeah. and just, he he was always interacting in that way. And that was always so fun to get to see one of the actors from this show kind of constantly interacting with fans. Um, so it was really surprising when it happened. Um, but yeah. I really, you know, best wishes to his family. I'm sure that they're grieving this very unexpected loss still. Yeah. I'm sure and one of my friends um, is a friend with a producer and the producer reached out to him and, and said that he had had lunch plans with Carl Weathers the day of the death and had texted him and get texted and he had not responded. He's like, it's so unlike Carl. And it yeah. was uh, because he had passed away and his family held on to that news for a day before they announced it on February 2nd. So it's just, a, it's just a, it's sad because that, because he was active, as you said, Laura, he was doing things. He was uh, available. There had been, I felt that there had been a second career Renaissance because obviously the stuff from, uh, um, um, uh, from happy Gilmore into happy into arrested development was his kind of second or first Renaissance rather. And then boom, here he comes as an older actor and he was taking advantage of these situations for himself. And that's, I think that's what makes it painful. And I want to bring this up because Ahmed Best comments, I think, were fantastic. Uh, when you look at it, oh, sorry, I, I shared the wrong one. Let me let me bring it up real quick because I, I want to make sure we get his words because he talked about coming back to be a part of Star Wars and what it meant and doing this episode. A fantastic picture he posted here on Instagram and said, I'm struggling with this one today. This is hard. Carl has always been a hero of mine since I was a child. I never thought I would ever be directed by him, let alone have the honor to call him a friend. As an artist, he was so generous with his wisdom and respect for the art of acting. He gave me golden nuggets that I will treasure for the rest of my life. He saw how nervous I was to be back in Star Wars and gave me the strength and confidence to perform. And so those are those words that you just kind of take with you when you appreciate that someone like Ahmed Best, who had gone through so much to come back and be a part of Star Wars again, the fact that he was in such capable hands. And arguably, you know, Carl had not directed at this level with this kind of a franchise. The confidence Carl had as an older director to understand how to speak to a younger actor coming back to take on this role and uh, come back into Star Wars, it was great that they had those moments together. And Ming-Na Wen spoke about it as well, working with him, and quite a lot of people. Adam Sandler gave wonderful tribute. So, you know, no. it's a shame to go, but going when everyone is loving you at the right time when you're in the middle of a renaissance, I think is is not a bad way to go, to be honest. So, But we will miss him for sure. And as Laura said, we send our thoughts uh, of uh, comfort and love to his family as they be do peace this loved exactly exactly on social media always be peace um all right well let's take a quick break uh and uh, when we come back we'll jump into our final two uh stories here right after this Okay, let's get oh, yeah. into it. I would have never had time to get up and do the, the thing. I'm <laughs> glad I tried to do it during the Gina Carano thing. I'm just thinking in future episodes, I'm going to wait till a new story. I won't try to do it during the mid-break. <laughs> You'll catch me with my pants down accidentally when I'm trying to... <laughs> Please, don't. Please don't. Please <laughs> don't. I, was I would like to pull... I would like to politely request to never have Elon Musk's face up on the screen for that long, that big, ever again. <laughs> I apologize. That was, I apologize. That was disturbing. Okay. We'll work. Yeah, it's funny. I think it's the haircut more than anything else. All right, let's move on uh, to some uh, Daisy Ridley news. Uh, she was on the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast with the great Josh Horowitz, 
who I happen to have played in a Schmodown match once upon uh, once upon a time ago. Uh, and she was asked about a number of things going on in the world of Star Wars. This was such a wonderful interview to watch. You know, Daisy is no longer the younger person you remember from those movies and those interviews. She's a woman now. She's married now. She's had some years in her career. And it was great to still see that energy, that youth, youthful energy combined with much more measured uh, um, answers and approaches to the questions that Josh was Josh was asking. She was, she was asked about the powerful backlash to the second two Star Wars movies, and she said, I think it's still upsetting because you don't want people to feel like you've not served the thing they're a fan of, but The Last Jedi was so divisive, so it really felt like the first one was fairly, everyone was responsive in a similar way, and then Ryan's one was super divisive, and then the last one was super divisive, but it didn't change how I felt about it. Uh, and she said in 2023, what was strange about being asked to come back to do Star Wars is literally before I had breakfast with Kathy Kennedy last year, I had five people come to me and go, are they going to do any more with you? And it was really strange in the sort of six to eight months before that, the way which I was being greeted by people's responses to it was quite different than it had been. I think just time had passed. And so that's what was really strange. Josh also asked her about the kiss between Kylo uh, and uh, and Ray. And he said, and she said, I was fine with it. It felt earned to me. What was interesting again is intentionality. My feeling is that the moment was that my feeling in that moment was that it was a goodbye. And so that felt earned. You can call a kiss a thousand things, but I felt like it was a goodbye. The whole scene felt so emotional. Laura, he kept she kept going and, talk, and talked about how they shot another scene without the kiss, and it was essentially Ray nursing Kylo as he passed away. And she said she lost control of her emotions and sobbed um, strongly because she felt it was really the end of her journey in Star Wars. So what was your thoughts as you read these comments and also watched some clips here from her with Josh Horowitz on what she said about uh, coming back to be a part of Star Wars? Well, I listened to the interview um, mm. and I really like it. I, I really enjoy his show. I think he always yeah. does such amazing interviews and she's always fun to listen to. Um, when she was 21, when she started yeah. the job with Star Wars um, and she's 31 now. So it's been, you know, a long 10 years and she's done quite a bit. It was really interesting getting to hear some of the other thing, the other projects that she's been working on yeah. since Star Wars wrapped for her. Um, I haven't really been following her career that closely, but I'm hoping to actually look into some of these uh, movies that she talked about. Mm. Um, I also didn't know that she was married. So this was lots of information that I got out of this interview. <laughs> I'm like, oh, good for her. It sounds like she's in a good spot. She is, yeah. um, I really there goes my the... chance with Ray. Darn it. Yeah. <laughs> now you never know. 50% of marriages. I don't know. But... Oh my God, Laura. <laughs> hey. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. I'm not saying anything that isn't true. But Kylo, the Kylo Ren Ben Solo stuff I thought was really fun to listen to. Um, yeah. I, I'm sure that there are some parts of the Raylo fandom that got more or less joy out of this. Um, especially the the sort of she stayed very neutral. I mm -hmm. noticed kind of in talking about it how a kiss, a kiss could mean a thousand things. And she's right. And I, I think that she's probably doing the right thing by leaving it, op continuing to leave it open yeah. to interpretation. Um, whatever I felt about the rise of Skywalker, I've sort of in their, their kiss and their ending, I've sort of made peace with it. It's had enough time. Um, I don't really want to go back and watch the movie, but right. I'm glad that it, that the reaction to both the last Jedi and the rise of Skywalker didn't really affect how she felt about the projects, at mm. least according to what she says in this interview. Um, yeah. I hope that that's true for her sake, because I think we just, it just recently came out this past week that Kumal Nanjiani had to go into therapy after the Eternals came out because of all the bad reviews that he read yeah. about it. So I hope that's very much not the case for what she experienced while she was going through the release of these last two films. But I don't know, Kevin, what was your reaction to this? Did you get a chance to sit and watch some of these clips? Uh, I did not get a chance to watch it, but I, I did read an article about the interview. So, uh, yeah, I mean bless her like bless anyone that you know puts themselves out there like roca you did a good tweet about like the schmodown and stuff and like i had a pretty successful career in the schmodown and i just mm. remember even like after winning the title like i all the there'd be if there was a hundred nice comments that one comment mm. that was just oh, yeah. like Ugh, screw him and his gloves and his hoodie like it would just i would be like what why doesn't this guy like me like and it's so <laughs> silly and it's such on a small scale and just to, to put yourself out there like that and to, to have yeah. that negativity on something and especially like as someone who has been on a movie set like i've been on i never had like a large part when i was a kid actor but i had a couple bit parts 
and yeah. it was like exhausting for even like the two weeks that I was on set or whatever. And like when these people are there for six months, you know, four months, five months out of the country and, you know, the originals like in Tunisia and, yeah. and wherever they were doing these new ones, like, um, and to come back and then to hear that fans weren't happy about it. You know what I mean? Uh, especially that the, the Ryan Johnson one where he even yeah. mentioned like the, how divisive it was and, and say what you will or how you feel about him, But, you know, and, it, uh, I'm just glad that it hasn't like defeated her, you know, like, mm -hmm. and it's, and I got worried again. Cause like she put herself out there. She got the crowd cheer, I think at celebration when they announced the new Ray movie. And then everybody was talking smack about how the Ray movie script leaks, which were, I think were BS anyway, but we're like ridiculous and it's a horrible script. And then suddenly she, her script got pushed for Mando and or her movie got pushed. And it's not the first one out now. Mando's the first one out. And I was like, man, is she going to go through the ringer again? And, I just I think I I think it's impressive that she's going to be brave and be like no like she's she's still proud of those movies which anybody who does that kind of work should be proud of the movies mm. movies are subjective or, or objective whatever the one is where like yeah. it's someone might love it another one's trash is someone's treasure or vice versa like um and and I found things to love about the sequel trilogy so you know uh, call me a shell or whatever but I just uh, I just think it's fair for anyone um to deal with, with that kind of negativity because just even feeling it on like a, such a small scale that we did with the showdown, it's mm. like, but imagine that, but like multiplied by millions or, you know what I mean? Like the, the you know, Kelly Marie Tran and everything that went on with that is just yeah. kind of heartbreaking, you know? So yeah, uh, I'm excited. It's cool to see them grow. And like, we see, we grow with them, you know, and how she was so nervous that first day on the set and her first couple deliveries were wooden, if you remember, and JJ had to like calm her down. And then she finally got in the groove. And uh, I think she's going to be awesome. And like more like when she comes back and uh, you know, as an older, wiser Jedi, it's going to be really cool. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see some of that energy when you watch the interview, that she has this kind of understanding of when to be political and when to be honest and vulnerable in her answers. And that tells you that's a person who's been through the ringer and experienced it, maybe spoken with therapists. You know, she hasn't revealed that. Certainly Kumail did today, but she's had her moments where she's had to kind of confront the reaction. But, you know, what was great about her is she said something that we all discovered being a part of the Shmodan is like, the people in person are so much better to you than the people online. And when they respond or when they leave their comments, they can be quite negative. But when we went to those live shows or got to perform in those live shows, people were so complimentary, so honest, so real, so cool. And Daisy said that, like when, uh, you know, I know there was negativity, but whenever I showed up at conventions, people were so nice to me. People welcomed me. They, they were so gracious. They were happy to see me be there and be a part of Star Wars. And I met, I bet some of those people were the same people saying negative stuff. But of course, seeing that person in person kind of makes you go, whoa, this is a real human being. I've got to, you know, your, your natural humanity kicks in. And so I agree with you, Kevin. I hope we're not setting her up to be pushed down the line again or to be, lost in the whole angry side of star wars the toxic side of star wars that goes after anything female related because she certainly doesn't deserve it but watching her in this podcast or in this episode with josh horowitz i was like this is this is a woman who can handle it now you can tell she'll be able to handle it and repel it and um has a good understanding of how to talk about it uh in a way that's not meant to be offensive to anybody and just be honest. And I, she was a big lights out Laura Kelly fan too, by the way, she was, she huge. was, I oh, heard that. Yeah. Huge. I heard, yeah, yeah. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. She was actually <laughs> the one that commented and said, I say, hate your hoodie and your gloves. So <laughs> <laughs> right in, sorry, uh, Daisy didn't like my, my smash. <laughs> this is all alleged, of course. Yeah, well, of course. Alleged, yes, yeah, of yeah. course. Allegedly, allegedly. So yeah. Anything more that uh, struck uh, stuck out of you, uh, either of you about uh, her comments or, or what she had to say about any of the stuff involved with Star Wars? She talks really fast and I had the interview <laughs> sped up on when I was listening to the podcast. So it was even faster. Um, but <laughs> she, I, I agree with what you said. She does seem to have a sort of, she's much more graceful in interviews mm. um, than she probably was earlier in her early days in yeah. this. In I this will business. say this. Yeah. If someone kisses you and then later says, oh, that could have meant a thousand things, you're probably in the friendship zone, just so you know. <laughs> oh, boy. Now you've done it. Now you, mm. Yeah, you, yeah you, might, you, might have been, you might have been put in the friendship. I think she, I feel like she put Ben in the friendship zone there saying, oh. I thought of it as a kiss goodbye. Like, if that's what her thought was in the take, then that's got to be in my head canon that that's what she yeah. was doing. So, You know what's funny is I watched Force Awakens the other day on TNT, just 
just had it on because I was doing stuff. I was really commercials, you monster. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, that's how I watched everything growing up. That's how I watched Star Wars the first time was with commercials on TV. So, um, yeah, so watching it and I just was like, there was a thing with her and, and Finn. There were some, there was a lot of moments where you're like, well, were they exploring this? Were they laying the groundwork for this? And so it's a fascinating trilogy to go back and take a look. And I think enough time has gone by where my feelings towards Rise of the Skywalker, Rise of Skywalker have cooled and I can watch that movie again. I have not seen it since I saw it at the screening at the El Capitan before the film came out because it was wow. so wow. bad. Even, I mean, <laughs> And Collider did like three free screenings and I turned them down each of them, uh, you know, because I just did not want to see the movie again. So, uh, but listening to her and, and, and in this podcast, I thought to myself, it might be time maybe to revisit that film and watch it again and maybe do a, a thing for the channel and watch it. Cause I, I just haven't seen it since that time. And so maybe there's more to enjoy about it than I initially felt there would be. So, but you know, it's There's great. a great edited fan scene of just the end where she's like, I am all the Jedi. And it has like, it has like, uh, Alec Guinness, Yoda, Hayden Christensen, and they're all behind her doing the, and it's really well done, man. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Uh, if when you, when you want to track it down, when you get to that scene, press pause on your, uh, <laughs> on your Disney plus, oh, Disney plus. And load up the scene. It's great. It's fantastic, <laughs> man. We shall see. We shall see. Then someone else got carried away and started putting everybody in there. You got Mace and Qui Gon. <laughs> like, all right, calm down, dude. We don't need Clo Koon back there. Just keep it with the, you know, or Jarl Poofs back there. But yeah, there's a, there's a great fan edit where they. Oh, yeah. People have too much time on their hands, man. People have too much time on their hands. <laughs> and that's um, the truth. <laughs> let's move on to our last story uh, here today. Let's talk about Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. He was uh, at MegaCon in Orlando. Uh, and shout out to friend of the show Maggie Lovett who interviewed Ewan as well at uh, another uh, um, uh, convention recently. Had a really nice interview with Ewan, but he was at um, uh, MegaCon Orlando, and he talked about the Obi Obi Wan Kenobi series and uh, its transition from a movie as it was originally envisioned. Um, and he also reaffirmed his desire for a second season uh, for of Kenobi. And he kind of humorously asked uh, everybody there. He said there was originally going to be a movie, and I've often thought should it have been a movie, but I kind of think it's great that they did it that way, and it's a longer story, and hopefully it's more satisfying as a result. We got more time to weave a story. Let's hope they do another one. Can everyone write to Disney and make this happen? So, Kevin, I go to you on this one. Obi-Wan Kenobi, a season two. Is this a fantasy desire? Is Ewan just kind of talking and having fun with it because he knows it's not going to happen? Or is maybe a little bit a kernel of truth of him wanting to maybe motivate people to ask for a season two of um, Kenobi? Look, as someone, and I get slammed online all the time about it because it's mm. my favorite of the Star Wars series on yes. Disney Plus. Um, and we did a fan edit where we made it into a movie. It should have been a movie. Um, you could have done it in a movie. Our movie proves it. Like, and I'm not saying that the other stuff was filler, but I'm just saying you you could have that story could have done it. So when you have when you when you take into account, I think what the overall runtime is over like four and a half hours or whatever. But you could have made it into two hour two and a half hour movie, and it mm. still had the essence of what it was and probably a bigger budget could have done a movie could have done a movie should have had vader's theme in it too i don't care what the composer says if vader's theme is played canonically in in chronological order and it's played in the river attack of the clones and then revenge of the sith you don't stop playing it in the kenobi series you put it in the kenobi series for god's sake it makes no sense that you didn't do it i don't believe it when you say oh she wasn't he wasn't vader yet gosh but notwithstanding please another and i'll get slammed in the comments for it kenobi was my favorite series it just it was right around the time where we had to our first vacation with my daughter we went to hawaii and Ooh. i watched i was listening to all the reviews of the shows uh while we were in hawaii and like we, right before our trip like we watched the the season premiere and i remember just freaking out when i saw uh rex or not rex but a clone mm. there with the, the helmet asking for a handout in that premiere and the two episode premiere it's a great time. The movie, the theme of Obi Wan is great. Da, yeah. da, 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 da. And notwithstanding, I understand all the problems about Riva and everybody. You could, you survive a stab wound. You survive a stab wound. <laughs> and not surviving stab wounds like uh, Oprah. I get it. It's silly and it's stupid. Our movie version, uh, Riva does not come back to Tatooine. She's killed by Vader the second time. Wow. No one should ever survive being stabbed by Vader any time. By the way, I digress. Yeah. 
Kenobi, bring it on. And I think he, not that he needs to redeem it. I think he knows the backlash of people didn't like it. And I think like any athlete, it's like, all right, give me another shot. Like, let's do this again and let's see if we can do it uh, maybe a little better this time. If he feels, like I said, it's still top of the list for me. You can see how fired up I am. Yes. But if he's feeling that, if he's feeling that backlash, as we've already talked, everybody, you can't avoid the comments. He probably understood the negativity of it. And he loves the Obi-Wan character so much. Yeah. And I think it's really like, uh, charming and heartwarming that he's like saying like let, get get everybody out there let's start dude this movie this was a hoodie that was from the S restore the Snyder cut yeah uh, it was a uh, fundraising hoodie and I donated to the cause and the movie finally got made so if I can wear a hoodie and it gets made it's because of this hoodie that it got made on HBO Max <laughs> if I could do it okay. you could do it if I could change you could change so yeah go, bring it all on I want more Kenobi but I don't don't have Vader now I don't I feel like no. that that's tied up now. So I don't know what you would do. I don't know where you would go, but I feel like, hmm. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't just, be, then you have to do a special edition of Return of the Jedi, like Obi-Wan once thought as you do, twice. In fact, first when we <laughs> fought on this planet that looked like B Barstow, and then the second time we fought in the dark, and then the third time in the second season. So I don't know what you'd have to do about that, Um, but yeah. Yes. Now, Laura, what are your thoughts on this, Lord? Do you, do you do you would you want to see a Kenobi season two? Are there lessons to learn from Kenobi season one? We did have a a young Leia. We uh, if we wait long enough, we may get you and looking a lot like Alec Guinness by the time we do <laughs> a second season. So would this be Luke the teenage years where he watches Luke from a certain spot? There would be no Vader, but maybe some way of because that's the that's the um the conceit you have to make with a series like that is this is that he can watch Luke and he already met Luke, but like, what are the crazy things that he would do that Luke Aww. ends up calling him the crazy old man in the desert. So what, is there a way to put something here together that would work for a season two, or is this just you and having fun with the fans and enjoying trying to encourage them to make a season two? I mean, I'm sure that there's something that they can do that would be really entertaining. I'm glad that I'm not one of the people that has to come up with it because I honestly <laughs> don't know where they would take the story. I think yeah. the story that I'm more interested in is picking up with Asajj Ventress, who's allegedly alive, mm. Quinlan Voss, and Reva on this Jedi path. I want yeah. that story, and I'd prefer to get that rather than we just kind of find an excuse to bring Ewan McGregor back to Star Wars yeah. when it just doesn't, there is no natural next place for them to go. Maybe there is. But I, in my mind, I don't think that there is. Well, that said, I loved I love the Kenobi show. I really enjoy it. I really like Reva as a character. I yeah. really liked all the cool Vader stuff. Um, but I agree that they did kind of wrap that up. So I don't know if there's any need to bring Vader back. Right. Um, but overall, I liked how it was done. And I've got really good memories of that show, too. Like, Kevin, when the night, when the night that we had the two-episode premiere... I was at Celebration in oh, yeah. uh, in Anaheim and got to watch it with a big group of people, and I just had the best time. Um, so that show will always have a warm place in my heart. Not sure it needs a season two, but I would not be opposed to it. So unfortunately, it's a pretty yeah. boring neutral answer, but that's where I stand. <laughs> I feel like the novel, the novel had a great story. Like if you really like it's ballsy and i think everybody would be like no it needs to be more global and huge but if if you had a legit threat to luke and and you just mm. don't show luke but like there's something that where he's like if i don't solve this on this planet right now it, it, the, the attention of the empire will come here and then luke's toast right right um, but like i remember one of the novel i know the comic book did it but the novel also had it was about the tuscans and uh, mm. although they just had the book of Boba Fett, so it kind of takes it. But like, you know, if you do a gritty like Logan style old man Obi-Wan out in the desert mm. and you keep it gritty and you, or like true grit, you know, and you yeah. keep it on planet and it's more a personal story. Um, and if they really sell it that way where they, they get a writer that's in there that knows his stuff and is like, no, this is this is going to be less global. And we're, he's already traveled all over the galaxy. He shouldn't leave that planet anymore. He already was mm. risking it. Right. Like he should stay on Tatooine. And so if if he, if they came up with a really cool, you know, uh, internal story uh, that um, speaks to, um, I don't know what he's dealing with, but you're right. Like they just kind of wrap that all up in a nice bow, that mm -hmm. conversation with Leia where he's like, these are the gifts of your father. These are the gifts of your mother, like gets me every time. So uh, yeah. I, selfishly, I want more Ewan, but dude. I would say do a DH Clone Wars movie, dude. Apocalypse Now, Obi-Wan and Anakin get separated and they're on a jungle planet and it's like Apocalypse Now and they're trying to get off wow. the planet with their grit and their and their lightsabers, dude. That's what I want. DH him and let's go, baby. 
What are you gonna say that he was a Jedi? That he was a kind man? That he was a good man? <laughs> that he used the saber, the Kyber crystal, correctly? Is that what you're gonna say, man? Oh, wrong, man. wrong. It writes yeah, I, itself. I can, see that. I can see that. I guess, yeah, but yeah, but I'd love to see you. And I, I think it would be an incredible shame if we never got you and back as Kenobi, because as he's aging, you can already tell the difference between his performance of Kenobi in that series versus his performance in the prequel series. You can trilogy rather, you can tell the difference, right? As I, as I was talking earlier about Daisy Ridley, like 10 years, as, as Laura pointed out, since she was first working on that first star Wars movie, there's a difference in approach. Age is what makes a great, a good actors, great actors. And so seeing you and have even more age on it, what's his approach would be. What are the limits to his physical body and his force powers as he gets older or how better, how much better in the force is he as a as a master what things are is he going to confront from the lessons that he was being told what's the yoda connection all of this right i mean he was still connected with yoga and dagobah and all of that so how much of that can you explore here so there's a lot you could open up that doesn't have to necessarily connect with vader but you do have to deal with the fact that vader knows he's there so it's like well where are we going to go with that so yeah, there's a lot of questions a lot of questions coming out of it, but I would like to see uh, Kenobi uh, back. Um, I do want to say one last thing as we're wrapping up here, because I know we're at the almost at the hour mark. Um, just to follow up on the Bob Iger story, which is our first story of the day, there have been some new reports coming out of some of the comments he'd made, and he also said that the, he hinted that there might be other mystery projects coming from Star Wars. Again, is this kind of giving him some wiggle room? Are we hiding the Lando movie? Are we hiding? What, what are you all's speculation of what he might be hinting at or uh, maybe kind of hiding right now and he, that he can't talk about it. Anything you guys it's my say? KOTOR movie, actually. It's my KOTOR movie. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm proud to announce that my Finally. KOTOR Convergence movie is well on the way and uh, Iger is behind it 100%. So over you'll be seeing that in theaters. Over Filoni's dead body. But yes. yes <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Laura, you're respecting Filoni hates me too. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, I forgot. Is the land did the Lando project get turned into a movie? Did I forget this? I think so. And and they're considering going that route. And and Donald seems to keep saying that it's going to happen. So yeah, that sounds familiar. Now that you say that, mm. that I wouldn't be surprised actually if something like that were to happen, or if I don't know, maybe something with the acolyte. Maybe they're really happy mm. with it. Maybe they want to bring a movie in that era. I yeah. mean, I wouldn't be opposed to that at all by any means so i uh, i don't know i i have a feeling that that's I, I don't know i don't know if that's anything i feel like that he's just might be just talking out of his ass a little bit there whoa he's just having some fun with it maybe. it's a plagueis novel they're, finally they're gonna make that canon so you'll oh, read the plagueis finally. novel right laura really laura <laughs> no comment <laughs> it's a good novel though it's not like i'm telling you to read trash it's actually really, i know really good. It's also on Spotify. Like I have Spotify premium, so I could listen to it for free and I <laughs> haven't. Even if you just skip to the second half of the book, I'll tell you what page to turn to because the it, it starts slow. <laughs> I'm worried you're going to start it and you're going to be like, now done after the first couple chapters. I feel like you're really overselling good. it. I feel like you're overselling it. Man. You need to read it too, pal. Everybody here needs uh, yes, to read it. I'm out like of order. You're out of order. <laughs> you're overselling it. <laughs> Oh, well, anyway, let's wrap it up there before we go spiraling <laughs> off into the universe. Um, thank you all so much for joining us uh, for this episode of The Jedi Way. You know, some a bunch of news popped up, and we felt it was the right time to get together and talk about it all. So we appreciate you all hanging out with us. And uh, I love these two and love talking Star Wars with these two. Kevin, um, please let people know what you got going on and where they can find you, my man. Yeah, I like to say we started out with Daytime Coruscant, which was like Attack of the Clones. Yes. And we ended on Nighttime Coruscant. Right yeah. now, Mace Windu just flew out flew out the window. So uh, I'm, I'm getting ready for Order 66. Uh, you can find me at Kev Smets right down below. And then also Scoundrels Inc. We've been doing some fun uh, countdown, not countdowns, but like uh, we recorded one this week. It's uh, our favorite soundtrack. So uh, try it. To talk, to talk about a tall order, trying to arrange your, your soundtracks in which favorite order. Um, my daughter just came home, so I'm going to mute the mic here. But I love everybody here. I'm glad I'm back. I'm glad I, I'm on the screen. Shout out to Brian Ward. He also put the Old Republic logo on my shirt, which is just hey. a nice touch. So yes. uh, God bless everyone. And uh, can't wait for the next one. We love talking Star Wars with you, too. Thank you, Kevin. And Laura, of course, always fun to see you. The OG co-host of the show. Uh, it's great to see you again. And please let people know. Everything I going on, what's going on in your world as well. 
Yeah, thank you guys. I always have so much fun talking to you guys. And I'm so excited about our new intro. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, it's so great. I hope that everybody else is excited too. Because it's exciting for us. Um, I, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at shutup underscore Laura. You can also follow my podcast, Force Toast to Star Wars Happy Hour at Force Toast Pod. We're celebrating Force Toast's five-year anniversary Hi. this year, this week. So that'll be this coming Tuesday. We'll have a new episode out celebrating that. So we're very excited. Um, and this, uh, it's, it, I'm recording it in the next couple of weeks. I'm not actually sure when it's coming out, but the podcast Star Wars in the Galaxy is doing one of their bracket streams soon. Oh, nice. Um, and so I had to pick like five or six Jedi that I want to like defend in this bracket thing. So we'll see how that goes. That'll be fun. Um, and I'll let people know when that is out available for viewing or listening. Did any of those Jedi show up in the fan edit that uh, Kevin is talking about? Cool um the fan edit i mean any of his stuff that's kotor yeah i got all of the kotor jedi in there <laughs> you gotta get coleman sure. trevor the dinosaur jedi man what? he's the greatest jedi of all time coleman trevor i want the dinosaur tiniest trevor, dude. little cameo in attack of the clones and i said yes that one that's the one i want he defend. was so if he would have just where he struck, dies <laughs> but if he would have hit that striking blow on dooku that's it and got to george directed by george lucas done no clone wars sure. but he didn't he got one clip and he dies in it that's all shot right. like several times i'm defending him i'll take dinosaur <laughs> jedi versus dinosaur spider-man as we saw in across the spider-verse i would like to see that uh, battle uh, down the road someday um all right well there you guys for me you can follow me at the roca says on twitter instagram and tiktok the outlaw nation on twitch uh right above my head you see the patreon had a wonderful conversation with our patron members last night time to rev up the outlaw nation patreon again so if you've been hesitating or if you've walked away from it we are back going full force, and there'll be some new fun stuff coming down the road. So come and check that out at patreon.com slash John Roca. But other than that, follow us here. Subscribe to the channel down below. Follow my two esteemed colleagues at their social media handles. And we'll talk to you next time with another brand new episode of The Jedi Way. Before we go, Laura, what do we have to tell? Until next time, remember, your focus determines your reality. <laughs> <laughs>